This morning, I want to talk to you for a few moments about peace. And for those of you joining us online, I want to share with you some things about peace that will hopefully give you some tools to deal with the things that happen to you in your life. So as I thought about peace, there was a couple things that came to my mind. The first thing is, when you're dealing with the word peace, you have to understand that it goes to the very deepest parts of who we are. And it goes to the very core of what we feel about at least three different things. The first one is the circumstances around us. And then who we are in those circumstances. And then what are the outcomes? So if you're going to have peace and you look at the circumstances of your life, and they're not very peaceful, how do you have peace? If you're looking at the circumstances of your life, and you haven't got it settled who you are, you're not going to have peace. And if you're concerned about the outcomes of whatever's going on in your life, to the point that you're trying to control those outcomes, you don't know who you are, and you're trying to deal with circumstances beyond your control, you're never going to have peace. But there's a peace that I want to talk to you about that comes from the very throne room of heaven itself. And this morning, God is on his throne. And the thing that he had the angels say to the shepherds after they praised God and said, glory to God in the highest in Luke chapter 2 the next words out of the angels' voices were peace to all men and women on earth upon whom his favor rests, or those who please him. God wants to bring us and has brought us his peace. Matter of fact, that's one of the things that Jesus said when he walked here on earth with his disciples as he was leaving them. He said, peace I give to you, not as this world gives it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled. He wanted them to know the peace that passes all understanding that one of his disciples talked about when he said, may the peace that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. The peace that I'm talking about is not just having an understanding of the circumstances or an understanding of who you are, or an understanding of how the outcomes are going to work out in your life, but a deep understanding of the peace that comes from the throne room of heaven itself that can roll through your heart into the depths of your spirit, a melody sweeter than song. You see, God's always playing music. I don't, don't know if you realize that or not. But God is always playing music. He loves music. And he loves music because he's given us this beautiful gift to create music. And I think of the uh, frequencies of the universe as a melody that sings a song to us if we'll just stop and listen. One day I was up on the north rim of the Grand Canyon looking across all of that beautiful expanse of pine trees and canyons and red rocks and all the things that were happening there. And as I sat down in that great cathedral of pine trees on that beautiful fall afternoon a light breeze began to blow. And that breeze began to blow through those big ponderosa pine trees. And there was a calmness and a stillness in that vast cathedral of nature. And through those pine trees, I heard the melody sweeter than song that in celestial-like strains unceasingly flowed o'er my soul 
with an infinite calm. You see, there's, there's something about who God created us to be that needs to be able to look at the circumstances around us and surrender those circumstances to him. And by surrender, I mean hands up, full surrender. I don't mean, God, I got this if you'll just help me. <laughs> no. God, you're in charge of these circumstances. And how we do that, I want to give you a recipe for how to do that. How do you surrender your circumstances to God? The first thing you have to ask yourself is, how do I look at myself? How do I see myself? It's one of the most important questions you'll ever ask. Who am I? And you can't be defined by just who your parents are. Don't tell me your first name and your last name when I ask you who you are. Don't tell me where you grew up or where you were born. How you look at yourself must be defined by this. You are a child of God, an eternal, living, never dying soul who is going to live into eternity with God Himself. You are His child, you are His creation. He formed you and made you from the foundation of the world, from the beginning and before time even existed. He knew you and he loved you and you are his child. You are infinitely more powerful than you realize and you have more of a future than you have of a past. And so whatever's happened to you in your past means nothing in light of eternity's call. How you look at yourself is the most important thing you will ever think of and ever understand. And then not only how you look at yourself, how you look at others. If you understand that you're a child of God and you look around at other people, you recognize that they're children of God too. You don't just see them as somebody in your way as you climb the corporate ladder. You don't see them as somebody to be, uh, you know, swerved around and, you know, why are you going so slow? And, uh, what's going on with you? And what's the matter with you? No, you begin to see the world differently because of who you know you are and then who you know others are too. And then you need to have a deep understanding of how you understand who God is. The recipe for having peace in the circumstances of your life is a deep understanding of who you are, who others are, and who God is. And when you understand who God is and get just a little bit of a, of a reflection of what he, what he really means when he says he loves us is best represented right here in what we've been talking about with the hope and the joy and the peace that Jesus came to bring. You may look at the world and say, well, if Jesus came to bring peace, it hasn't worked out very well. <laughs> if this was God's plan for peace, what in the world? <laughs> well, the problem is we're always getting in the way of what God wants to do. We're getting in the way of the peace that he wants to bring us. And, and you know, I, I look at the world too and I see what's going on. My eyes aren't veiled. As a matter of fact, when you are living the way God wants you to live and you're looking at the circumstances around you through the lens of who God wants us to be and how he wants us to treat others and who he is, the Holy Spirit opens up your eyes to things that other people can't see and don't understand. The circumstances of your life depend on your opinion of who God is. Now, when I look at the circumstances and I see the problems and I say to myself, well, how is God going to work that out? 
I have to go back to the very beginning of this recipe and say, who am I to God? Who am I to God? And one of the things we regularly do as human beings is undervalue ourselves. We undervalue how much God loves us consistently. If we truly understood the value that each one of us have to God, it would change our perspectives. It would blow our minds. So think about it this way. If Jesus only had to come for one person, and that one person was you, he would have come for you. Don't look at it as just a a, a universal thing or a corporate thing, as important as that is, because we're all in this together. But you need to understand that your value is such that if you were the only person he would have to come and show love to and show what it meant to see the very best of heaven represented, he would have come for you. That's how valuable you are to God. So the circumstances of your life and the things that we look around that that just cause us all kinds of of fear and, and chaos, God wants to work through those circumstances to change our perspective about who we are, who he is, and how we're supposed to live with the people around us. That's the first thing that we have to get right. The second thing we have to get right when it comes to this recipe of peace is to be intentional about deciding who we're going to be. Every day you have to get up and you have to decide who you're going to be. Every morning is a new day. (laughs) And some of us are naturally kind of, don't know if I really want to get up today or not. It's just our natural, it's just, yeah. You know, kind of, you remember uh, the old cartoon, Winnie the Pooh? Uh, How many of you remember Winnie the Pooh? Those of you online, you can raise your hand too if you remember Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh is just kind of this rollicking, jolly little bear, and he kind of just goes through life chasing butterflies and rainbows. He's always got something nice to say to the neighbors, and isn't it a wonderful day, and everything's wonderful. And one of his best friends is a little donkey called Eeyore. You remember Eeyore? Well, I don't know. (laughs) And some of us just have a little bubbly bear personality. and We're just kind of going through life and the grass is greener and the sky is bluer and the birds are singing sweeter and the whole day is cooler. It's a wonderful day. And some of us are, well, I don't know. And you have to be intentional about who you're going to become. It doesn't happen by accident. You have to decide every morning when you get up how you're going to view the circumstances around you. And listen, there's some things that affect that. And please don't hear me lessening the impact of how you were raised, who you've been told that you are, and what others have done to hurt you. Because those three things are what you're going to struggle with when you're trying to be intentional about deciding who you are. You're going to struggle, maybe sometimes in very difficult and painful ways with how you were raised and how you were brought up. And what life looked like to you growing up. Maybe you didn't have a godly home or parents who taught you the spiritual truths of love and life and the importance of what it means to be a person of God and how important it is to to love the people around you and to love God. Maybe you didn't have that. Maybe you've been told since you were small or a child of, you were given a perspective of the world about who you were, and, and that's, those voices ring in your head when you're trying to be intentional 
about giving the circumstances of your life to God. And the hurts and the pain that other people have caused you are a part of the fabric of your life and your understanding of how people love each other and live together and what that's supposed to look like. And that's going to be something that you'll have to war against when you intentionally decide, no, I am a child of God regardless of what anybody else has told me. I am loved by God unconditionally regardless of how I may feel about myself because of what others have said about me. And God has called me to forgive those who've hurt me so I can move on from that situation and not be bound to the circumstances around that person and that problem. I can be delivered from the bondage of whatever happened and God can deliver me to live a better life in a better way before him. But that takes you deciding. <laughs> and then back to the first part of this recipe, that takes you completely surrendering. You can decide to surrender. And let me just ask you this question. Think deeply with me about the things you actually control. Think deeply with me about the things you actually control. Everybody here today and those watching online, you have a heart that's beating inside your chest right now. Do you control your heartbeat? Well, you think really calm thoughts and you meditate, you might be able to lower your heartbeat just a little bit. And that's a good thing. Nothing wrong with that. Psalms 1 says you meditate on his law day and night. Be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So there's nothing wrong with calming yourself before God. But how many of you would want to stop your heartbeat? And how many of you would want to think to tell your heart every time it was supposed to beat? <laughs> I know I wouldn't. I'd spend all my time telling my heart to beat. There are so many things about life that we do not control, starting with our heartbeat. A simple thing. Not a difficult thing to understand. And if you can't even control your own heartbeat, what else can you really control about the circumstances of your life? You can't control who you were born to. You can't control how you were raised. You can't control the things that others have done to hurt you. You can't control any of that. The one thing that we do have the ability to say yes to is God's complete control over our lives. God, you're in charge. You're in control. I'm not. You're in control of my circumstances. And you are going to define me, God. I'm going to surrender who I am to you completely and follow after your wisdom and follow after your word and follow after your truth with all of my heart completely surrendered to you. And that's when the great symphony of peace begins to wash over your soul in fathomless billows of love. Unbelievable, incomprehensible tsunamis of love into your heart and into your mind and into your soul beyond the circumstances, beyond the problems, beyond how people have defined you, beyond how people have hurt you. There's a peace that only comes from heaven that can come into your heart and into your life and into your soul. And then the final part of this is the most difficult part. I'm getting progressively more difficult. The final ingredient for peace has to do with the outcomes of life. And you have to trust God as you surrender to him and intentionally working towards being the person he wants you to be, you have to surrender the outcomes too. And that is the most difficult one for me. Because I desperately want to influence the outcomes. I want things to go my way. Don't you? I mean, if you're going to be honest with yourself, don't you want things to go your way? 
You don't want them to go somebody else's way. I mean, why would I think it unless it wasn't the right way? Right? I mean, who wants to say, I'm going to do this and it's not going to work out the way I want it to? Nobody. We all want to control the situation. We all want to control the outcomes because we have good goals in mind and God needs to understand that we're doing this the way it needs to be done. But what if God doesn't agree with our plan? What if God looks at our plan and says, no, there's a better way to do this? What if we're not even walking according to God's plan, but we're so caught up in our own plans and ambitions and ideas that we're just off on our own, doing our own thing? And there's a couple things that I ask myself when it comes to the outcomes of life. And the first thing I ask myself is if I've been a success or if I've been a failure. Am I a success at what I do or am I a failure? I often think of the early church <laughs> and the disciples and the people who followed Jesus. And if you look at their lives and you look at how they ended up, nobody in their lifetimes would have classified them necessarily as a success. Look at our own country and look at the people who signed the Declaration of Independence. Most of the men who signed the Declaration of Independence died a violent death. Never got to see the result of the country that they lived and died for and wrote their signatures on on that declaration. Never saw or heard those words that were written close to Pike's Peak in Colorado. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains, majesties above the fruited plain. The alabaster cities that gleam. Never saw any of that but believed in the future of what would happen if they stood for what was right and for freedom's sake. How much more God has looked into the circumstances of our lives and sees those things that we consider to be a failure that he calls an absolute success. That through the circumstances of life, we trusted in him even when it was difficult and painful even when we had to declare bankruptcy, even when we had a divorce, even when we had a family tragedy, God looked at those things we saw as complete failures and instead saw something he could use to help us and bless us to become the person that he's called us to be. And the second part of this is not am I a success or a failure, but also am I happy with the results of who I am? This life is a place that is made by the way that we live and who we are. Reaching for the things that we want the most is like trying to catch the falling stars. As these cords of life are woven around me and as time runs through my hands in the sand, like a picture that is painted on a canvas the pattern shows the world who I am. What does it mean to be a success? What does it mean to trust the outcomes of our lives to God? What does it mean to be defined intentionally by who God says we are, not what anybody else says we are? And what does it mean to surrender completely to God the circumstances of our lives? When we surrender the circumstances of our lives to God, when we intentionally reflect on who we are and what we're going to be, and when we completely trust God with the outcomes of life, we can begin to have peace. And it will be a peace that isn't dependent on the circumstances of life, isn't dependent on our opinion of the outcomes of life. It's completely dependent on God's grace and God's mercy and God's love sweeping through the very depths of who we are with that melody of peace. 
because it comes directly from heaven's throne room. I can have peace through the difficulties of life. I have stood by the bedsides of those who were dying. And I've looked into their faces and saw the peace that passes all understanding. I've walked into the corridors of Rady's Children's Hospital in San Diego, stood next to my friend as he watched his son going through some of the most painful processes that you could ever go through as a child, and watched his heartbreak as a father watching his child go through those procedures, but still having a deep peace about his future. There's only one source for peace in this world. The true peace that I'm talking about, there's only one source. That source is not you. That source is not your circumstances. That source is not how you're defined about who you are. And that source is not about the outcomes that you may think you want. The peace that I'm talking about comes from heaven itself and defines who we are by how we look at the world around us, how we look at who God is, and how he's working through the circumstances of life to bring the outcomes that only he can determine and that only he knows. Because I control absolutely nothing except my yes to what he wants for me. And when I completely surrender that, I have the power and the strength of heaven behind me, and I have the peace that I'm talking about coming through my heart and my soul like nothing you can imagine. Let me tell you something. When you surrender to God, when you surrender your circumstances to God, when you, when you intentionally decide that he's going to be trusted, you're going to trust God with the outcomes, and you really believe it and you really mean it, there's a weight that lifts off your shoulders. I mean, there's something that happens. There's a supernatural symphony that begins to play in your life. And you can have peace, even when it's not logical, even when it's irrational, even when people look at you and say, how can you be so content? <laughs> how can you have peace through all of this? Well, it's because... I know who I am. I know who God is. I know how much he loves me. I know I'm his child. I know he's going to see, the, see me through. I know he's going to be there, and he's in charge of the outcomes, not me. Success or failure is independent on me because I'm God's. He's got me. He's got you. And he's got this. And he's going to work it out. Then we can begin to understand peace. For those of you watching online, for those of you that are here today, some of what I was saying comes from an old hymn called Wonderful Peace. And the first verse says, Far away in the depths of my spirit tonight rolls a melody deeper than song. In celestial-like strains it unceasingly, unceasingly falls o'er my soul like an infinite calm. Peace. Peace, wonderful peace, coming down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. Would you stand together with me as we close our service today? I want to thank you for your kind attention and for those watching online as well. And I know that there may be people here who do not have the peace that I'm talking about. Some of you watching online may not be trusting God with the outcomes. You may still be trying to define who you are based on what other people think about who you are. And you may still uh, not have surrendered your circumstances to God. If you would, just bow your heads for a moment with me. And if you're struggling with any one of these three parts of this recipe this morning, and you'd like to change that, would you just raise your hand so I can pray with you that God will help you to have his peace through the circumstances of your life? Thank you, I see that hand. Thank you, I see your hand back there. Thank you, I see your hand. 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 God knows your heart. He knows what's going on. And we're going to give it to him today. Maybe a child somewhere you're praying for, a loved one. Maybe a health issue, some circumstance that you're dealing with. Some of you may have gotten some bad news from a doctor. Some of you may have got some bad news from a child you're praying for and you love. Whatever the situation is, God knows. 
So let's just give it to him right now. For those of you watching online, I want you to just bow your heads with me now and pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time to talk about your peace. And Lord, through the circumstances of our lives, may we find your peace that passes all understanding. Lord, we have a purpose that no one else can accomplish. Your will for us is greater than we can understand. We have a great adventure to live out. And so, Lord, we pray that you would make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. May we reflect on the prayer of the saints who have gone before us and live as an instrument of your peace to be the people of God you've called us to be. May you change us and transform us and renew us into somebody you can use for your glory and honor. And may the deep peace of Christmas be with us during this time. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As I say every week, I want you to know I'm available to you as your pastor. Give me a call. For those watching online, call me, contact me. My email is matt at hopechurchvista.com. You can have the phone number here at the church. Please would love to talk to you and pray with you. If any of you have a need or a burden, please let me know. God bless you. Have a great week. Thank you.